Hey guys, it's Dan again, and uh, this is the part two of using sampler. Uh, I guess the last video might have been a bit longer than I was trying to make, and I, I think that kind of deters people. So, try to make this video shorter and get to the point. So, last time I had the, I was talking, I said I'd go into the time settings here. So, uh, we'll talk about the time, and we'll talk about the key tracking, velocity tracking that's here. And so, if we go uh, here, I was messing around with the velocity tracking. We'll just kind of turn that back to off. So. Um, with the time, you have a gate, and if you look in the upper left-hand corner, there's some values. And according to the user manual, uh, these are ticks. And it's, anyways, the uh, you can um, NFL if you go to help and then clip on the help index, it just brings you to a Google. Or whatever your default browser is and to this you'll go to this page and um, you can actually click on this picture and it will actually bring you to the area that corresponds to that portion of the picture and you know it's pretty helpful actually pretty ingenious um, anyways so the time intervals are set in ticks or steps ticks format I goodness so um, to show you kind of what ticks are we go to FL and I put a note in um, additionally you want to make sure that your hold value like you when you're you if you're using the wave uh, or the, the filter the ADSR filter to um, you know get your notes to turn off and on with the key presses then you want to make in order to understand your what you're doing you if this is too short then you can have your time longer and it won't matter right so anyway so uh going back to here this is the miscellaneous functions tab um so i put a time and you'll notice that it it's stopping at about here um so if we bring up this guy the time is set if we look in the upper left to 123 what it's not a minute 23 seconds it's not a uh, 123 seconds or anything like that it's just it's one eight i don't know how the tick stuff works so but anyway if um so let's bring it down to just one one even and let's make this guy detach so he doesn't go away and then we'll play so zoom in wow you cannot it will not let me zoom in anymore wow i guess that's a different setting to change but if we play it it looks like it's only playing to here uh, let's bring it to there. Nope, we're going longer. We can look at the mixer to see the size of the note to see if it's longer or not, if it's hard to hear. That looks like it's the same size as when I go down to a sixteenth of a note. So going up to... I don't know what a sixteenth and the thirty second is called combined. A dotted six dotted sixteenth, yeah. Um, the, it's the same. So a one value is a sixteenth note. So um, I've if you go to the snap settings, you can if you select half step, the it'll um, break the grid down from a sixteenth note to thirty second notes. In, in your piano roll. So we got, you know, the one, the two. So this is measure one, measure two. We got, it's in four, four time, um, just to kind of go into, if you go to the general settings, um, I believe this is where 
well, it's project settings, uh, four, four time. And then it's just by default, uh, the piano roll will uh, goes to 16th notes and um, but you can select half step for the snap and that way it'll view uh, half of the 16th notes and you get your 32nd notes all right so moving on so that's how you set that if we if we move the time up to two then we should be able to do um, basically an eighth note. So we get, let's see if it's longer. No. Oops. Stop it. There. Now that makes it a little bit shorter. So yeah. So it's just, so each one of these ticks, so it's two, it'll be two sixteenth notes. We raise it to three, it'll be three sixteenth notes. And if we go all the way up, it's four. If we go down just a, or excuse me, if we go all the way up, it's it's just off. But if we go down just a smidge on the, with the lever, it'll go down to four. And so that'll give you a whole beat, That's all, or quarter note. So quarter note, um, then uh, three is gonna be your half note to a half note, not a half note, sorry, eighth note, and then three is going to be a dotted sixteenth, and then uh, two is going to be sixteenth, and one, did I say that right? No, one is a sixteenth. Yeah, one's the sixteenth. Two is the eighth. And then three is a dotted eight, uh, dotted eighth note. And then four is a quarter note. And then we got one, two, three, four. Goodness sakes, numbers. So that's the, that that's the ticks. And there's, you know, intervals of 16. 16th notes um, and then shift and swing are the kind of they're just timing offsets so if we do if we add shift um, if we add a value of 05 I guess if we go all the way up we get a whole value of 16th off um, Not sure when, um, where it applies the shift, but according to the directions, according to the manual, the shift turn, turn that knob and you can trigger with up to a 16th note, which is what I just said of a time period. Um, uh, so it, uh, turn the to delay the note. It's supposed to delay the note by a sixteenth. So I was trying to see if I was pushing. Whenever I pushed the space bar, I was trying to see if it would delay a sixteenth note. It's hard to kind of tell. Um, but anyway, um, I'm sure that um, it, with everything else that you would have adjacent to that in your music, it would become apparent that it's being delayed. Um, and additionally to that. The swing mix um, is a multiplier knob, and it's actually t will be tied to the channel rack knob, uh, which is or not uh, to, it's tied to the channel rack, and you yeah, so that's this knob right here. Um, I don't know which if. So I don't know if there's like conflicts and which one like takes precedence over the audio signal. But anyway, there's those things. So uh, if you use the portamento, um, you're basically um, ignoring the gate time and swinging uh, your pitch 
to the next note, if whatever different note it is. Um, so anyways, that's, that's kind of what you're, that's, so this time knob is, that's oriented in ticks and using portamento it, it, um, well, if you look it up here, um, it sh well, you didn't get down to, it should, yeah, when portamento notes are used, selecting this will ignore the gate time and, and this time setting, and it'll just play the full note length. So your Mac can, that, and that will be stipulated by if you've set the ADSR for your note, if you haven't played, if, and that's how you get the, the keyboard keys to turn it on and off. Um, if you didn't do that, then it'll just play through this whole thing anyways. All right, so on to the next thing. So the, you got the, uh, I thought on at first sight that this was volume and then key, but it's velocity and key tracking. So if I play a note and um, by default, it's set at, I think, 50%. Let me see. If, I got to check this other one, see what it, yeah. It's middle, uh, nope, it's set at 78% by default. Um, anyways, so for for velocity, basically, what what it what what's going on with that is that if well, um, so these mod X and Ys actually go to I believe these guys, and you can um, set the different filters. And I'm not going to get into all that, but the point is that this velocity is however hard these keys are getting getting hit. Um, if I, let's say, for example, I bring the pan all the way to the left, um, we get, you know, it wants to come out the left. I've got the, it's at the 50% value. If I, if I hit the key real lightly, we get, the signal comes out of both channels, uh, right and left channels. Um, if I hit it hard, it just comes out of the left channel. If I bring this value all the way to 100%, hit it softly, uh, it switches the panning to the right. And if I hit the key real hard, it goes back to the middle. If I bring it all the way to the left, the opposite happens. I hit it softly, it comes out of both channels, right and left channels. If I hit it hard, it comes out of the left channel only. So I'm not sure when, you know, you might want to use velocity tracking, but hey, it's there if you want it. Um, and then key tracking, of course, is if we, let's bring this guy back so we don't get an effect. Key tracking, bring it again all the way to the left. And if I go up and down the notes, or so C5 should be... Yeah, both both channels, no effect. If we go up to C7, we just in the left. If we go down to C3, we get the other channel. So everything over here, based on where this is set at the C5. So you you set your your middle your fundamental key to offset from with this slider, and then whatever key you notes you play above or below all the notes below c5 are going to be mixed to the left the lower they are the further and more they are going to be in the left channel you go to the right oh wait yeah so i think i said that i just said that backwards so all these notes are, are going out of the right. So everything below what you said, what you set, if I'm setting everything on the left, which is just negative 100, um, all the notes left or lower will come out the right and everything above your fundamental note will come out the left. Um, if we go to zero, the op, uh, excuse zero, um, really, so this is just the look, so that's the behavior regardless of where you set this. So wherever you set this note, wherever you set the fundamental note, 
your, your behavior is going to correspond from that note. So everything above will be to the channel, to the panning that you set, everything below it will be on the opposite, towards the opposite direction. And then again, you can set, let's see, the, the mod X. So if we, I'm going to see if I can do this. I might be wasting your guys' time, but so if we got mod X, um, we got a low pass filter. So, does that really seem to be doing exactly what it indicates? Um, so I'll get into this in the next video, um, but and so we'll figure that mod X and Y thing out then. But anyway, so I've kind of gotten to I've kind of got to where I wanted in this video. So this is that's how this portion works for the the sample or NFL studio, the key and velocity tracking, and then what the time does. So anyways, goodness, I'm just, just trying to run through all this and make videos about it. Just helps me understand it. And I hope it helped you guys out with uh, your understanding of the sampler. So anyways, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And um, throw a comment, like the video. Um, I'll take questions. I'll try to answer them in the next video. So y'all have a good day.